Hey, welcome back to the food forest. Today's video, I'm gonna do a couple things. I wanna show you pass caps. This is what's, you know, what's growing right now in the food forest. I like to always give those updates and people love them. So you like them, you ask for them, I'll give it to you. We're also gonna go get some mushrooms because that is really bountiful right now in the spring. And I noticed a ton of pawpaws have set fruit. So this could be the first year that we get pawpaws and we might get a ton of pawpaws. But before we do that, I wanna do a couple little channel updates. So two things, we're gonna visit back with Tom, who's not his real name, um, but we're gonna visit back with Tom. He has a very small urban backyard that's about, uh, I think it's about 10 feet by around 30 feet, something like that. And he lives in the city and we did a permaculture consultation design for him. We've got videos of us visiting his small urban backyard. If, in fact, if you actually search my channel for urban, you can probably find his videos that way. Um, we did uh, an update last year. We're gonna go back this, probably this week and do an update uh, again, and we'll show you what it's looking like. He's a fantastic person, like just a true salt of the earth person, uh, a great friend. And uh, you know, and it was a friend that I made through the consultation pro uh, process and actually doing this work for him. I didn't know him before I started this YouTube channel. So great friend, great person. He's got a bountiful backyard and he's so connected to nature and the wildlife that he's bringing in and the incredible bounty and, of food and flowers and just peace that he's built on his land. So we're gonna definitely follow up with him. And then just an update on my father because uh, it came out in some of the videos or some of the comments in some of the recent videos that yeah my father was in the hospital he had quadruple bypass surgery he's actually out of the hospital now he was in and out a little bit he had a couple rough moments there for a while he was really rough going in so i feel tremendously blessed to have him with us still he's still alive and kicking and uh, being mo and he's back home now resting and we're kind of visiting him and helping him out so uh thank you so much for all the kind words and prayers i think it helped um he's uh he's a great father i'm so happy to have him as a dad and if you're watching this dad i love you so i hope you're proud of me we're gonna go out and actually watch see what's going on in the food forest right now so let's get out there uh, we were picking has caps all morning and uh, this is what a has cap berry looks like so they're like these little bell-shaped blueberries Mm. And if you like Sour Patch Kids, uh, when you were a kid, you're going to love these healthy Sour Patch Kid. These are very healthy. They're very high in vitamin C and fiber. And uh, it's really, really good to eat these things raw. They're delicious. We harvest them right around now. Um, some of them can be bitter. If you get them too early, they actually taste like an olive. It's actually... That's one there that tasted like an olive. And I love olives. They got quite a bit of a, an olive kick at the end. But I actually like that. So I actually picked them right around now when they're transitioning from olive to kind of a sweeter, sour berry. That's what these taste like. That's the flavor profile. These things are bulletproof in cold hardy climates. You don't need um, acidic soil pH like you do for blueberries. We can't grow blueberries here, but we do have a lot growing in the wild up north of us. Um, but the soil isn't great for blueberries on my property. We've got a soil pH of about 7.2. So uh, has caps, however, do fantastic. They grow really well, no pest problems. The only thing is birds. Birds will come and clear these out when they get sweet like that one. Mm. So you wanna harvest them, like all permaculture, and just orcharding in general is you want to time when you're harvesting stuff. You don't want to harvest them too early where you're eating kind of unripe fruit. The whole reason we're growing fruit is so we can get that really, you know, taste that you can't buy in a store. And the whole time that the fruit is growing, it's taking solar energy, nutrients from the soil. The plant is putting that into the fruit. So when you buy strawberries from the store and they taste like they're empty, kind of because they are empty. They were picked when they were green and they're, you know, nitrogen blanketed to you know, artificially ripen up on the truck. It's not the same as when the energy is coming from the sun and the nutrients from the ground and the bush or plant or fruit or tree is actually converting, you know, those things into sugars. It's um, 
you know, sucrose, it's not fructose, you know, so this is all things that you really want to, this is why we grow our own food. We want healthy, delicious food. So picking them at the right time is important. If you pick them too early, they taste like olives for has caps, which I actually kind of like. They're still healthy, but as they ripen up, they turn into something really great and they turn into fantastic jam if you pick them when they have a little bit of sweetness like that. A little bit of sour, a little bit of sweet, that's always great for jam. But then you also wanna pick them before the birds get them. So if you let them go too long, they'll drop on the floor. You might get insect problems. Birds will definitely get a bunch of them. And you'll have a ton of house caps on one of your bushes one day, you'll wake up the next morning and you will have zero. You'll have none because the birds will come and take all of them. So there's a nice balance between feeding nature, which we promote on this channel all the time, but then also making sure that you get a harvest because you're doing all the work in the food forest. So let's get out there. I won't show you picking the, the has caps. I picked them earlier today and then I thought, you know what, I better do a video. I'm gonna be gone this weekend. So this might be the only chance to get a video out there. I'm also not gonna really edit this one much. You can tell I've been rambling now for six minutes, which I normally cut a lot of this out. I'm not gonna do that today because I don't have time. But I do want to get out there, show you some stuff, and then uh, let's go going. I'll stop talking. All right, so look at this. I just went and put those house caps away. And I noticed right on top of my inverter, this is the uh, Thronius inverter for our solar panels, we've got a bird nest. So it must be a little nice and warm in there, a nice sheltered place. We've got bird nest right up in there. I'm not sure if there's any eggs in there. I'll have to check. So yeah, we're just gonna head over to here, which is a great patch for my mushrooms. So let's head on over there. I'm not gonna edit this. I'm just gonna kind of run over there instead. And I'll show you what we got going on here. So a lot of mushrooms. So let's go collect some of these. Now I like to use scissors because the mushroom is just the fruiting body of the actual plant. And um, I try not, not to disturb the mycelium which is underground. So mushrooms aren't like a lot of other forages where you should leave you know, 90% of it up and only harvest a little bit. This is more like fruit on a bush and you can take all of it because this doesn't hurt the plant and you want to get them before they've opened up and sporulated. So let me show you, this is a great one to get. When they're smaller like this, these are fantastic in like eggs or something like that, or even just raw eating. Cooking them definitely brings out the flavor, but eating them raw is good too. This one here, you can possibly eat this one, but I'll show you that you might want to just look inside here. See all these holes? This thing is filled with worms. So you want to definitely get them before they're like that. See all these little micro holes? I hope you can see that. But there's these tiny little worms that eat these. And they've opened up and started to drop spores. The one that, this, the one that was under this, right underneath this area, is right here. So you can see this mushroom's already sporulated. It's got the spores all dumped out on this mushroom. So this is a good one here to actually plant if you want more mushrooms in another area. So, to show you that. Pretty complicated, eh? So those are good for that. So all the mushrooms have a good purpose and it's good to just use them for what they're good for. The sporulated ones aren't gonna be great eating. 
they might have worms on them if they're too mature so we try to get the early ones and then we try to uh, propagate and spread the other ones so let's go get that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pause here so that you don't watch me harvesting for 10 minutes so actually even though that patch had a ton of mushrooms i think we'll only take these and we'll make them just for breakfast maybe a quick little lunch for the road and we'll leave the rest because a lot of them are really small and uh I don't know, can we see right there like this patch here a lot of them are really small and that way when i come back from the weekend they'll be perfect for breakfast on on monday and moving over just a bit i know that there's a ton in this patch here behind this multi-graph pair and uh I won't necessarily go back there and grab them because I really do need to get going. Trisha's going to be a little mad at me that I'm lost out in the food forest again. Um, so I'll probably leave those, but I do know they grow all in there. But I just want to show you the fruit set on the pear here. we got a ton of fruit here. Okay, so now let's walk down to the pawpaws. And when we walk down, I'll talk. Well, We'll talk down on the walk down. Okay, so here is just the general food forest and how it's doing. You can see the comfrey wall is great for all the, the bees right now. So many flowers. Let me pause this and pull these legs up for my tripod. All right, that's better. Uh, sorry if the camera bounces off plants. Hey. I got it connected to the tripod right now. Let's pull up this dog strangling vine wherever we see it. So here's the peaches. Peaches are dealing with their peach leaf curl a little bit and the strawberry patch right here that we've kind of really not done much with this year. We've got strawberries coming, so they're not quite ready. I saw another one here that might be ready. This one's ready enough. So we, we're eating strawberries. Mm, oh my goodness. I'll tell you, like, has caps are nice for their, their sour flavor. But holy, garden-grown strawberries are just something else. Holy, those are good. Mm. All right, so down to the pawpaw area. I did check on these earlier this morning, and I thought, well, I want to show everyone my pawpaws. Getting all excited. So pawpaws, we're really pushing zone on pawpaws here. You can see this wilder area down here. Very, very wild. Came down here in the mower to try to give a little bit of a cut. To this here's the pawpaws now it's funny down here we're getting closer to the back part of my property which is all swamp and when i get down in here man the mosquitoes get brutal and you can really tell the difference between where i plant and have all these herbs and flowers and insect predators to take care of mosquito problems where i have the pond and then down here you can probably see them, I'm guessing. I'm getting swarmed. But down here we have tons of mosquitoes. So that, like alone, I know that the planting herbs for pests works. And adding water for dragonflies works. But look at all the pawpaws. We've got... Oh man, I'm getting eaten. We've got a ton of pawpaws here set. We've even got some on this tree here. I saw them earlier kind of in the back there you see this is the first one we've ever had on this am i covering it there we go do you see it there oh, it's really hard to do one-handed and then i did see some up here on these flowers up there so even on this one this is a tree that was a two feet tall maybe a year or two ago and now it's pushing 10 feet Pawpaws are doing fantastic in this kind of lower shady wet area. And this one is loaded with pawpaws. You can probably see them better than me, but even all the way up 
all the way up there 20 feet maybe maybe even 25 feet up there gonna need a ladder to get them but we've got paw paws everywhere so tons of paw paws now what will happen from here is that the paw paws will actually start to shed some of that because that is just way too much um, maybe if you grow paw paws can you let me know do you thin your paw paws and get better fruiting like that i know for peaches and stuff you do have to do that apples i would suspect for paw paws it's the same that's a ton of energy that the plant needs to deal with so let me know in the comments if you have paw paws do you thin them and should i thin them should i thin some of those out we're getting into wildflower here wildflower hill here in the morning getting a little closer to the pond the mosquitoes are following me in but when I'm here, I get no mosquitoes normally. I was just down here this morning. And it is just looking fantastic. A little wild and crazy, but the longer you do this, or at least the longer I do this, and the longer I learn that, you know, some of the ugly looking weedy flowers turn into daisies. Some of the other ones are goldenrod or soapwort. So we've got goldenrod here. And when you learn about these plants and how good they are for the ecosystem, then this wild and crazy starts to not look so wild and crazy. You know, you actually know the plants, you know the oregano and the yarrow, and you know their benefits to the ecosystem. You know, the daylilies will produce, you know, edible, edible pods that we've got uh, fiddleheads in here. A lot of this stuff we've planted ourselves, but if, you know, if rocket or dock pops up, we let it because we know that that stuff's valuable. If goldenrod pops up, we let it. So the pond area is just teeming with life. And already I'm up here and I've got no mosquito problems at all. It's just, it's crazy what healthy oxygenated water and herbs and flowers do. There's nothing here. There's no mosquitoes at all. I was getting swarmed down there a second ago. There's a seedling peach that we planted last, maybe two years ago. So we actually put this peach underneath one of the other peach trees because I thought the peach trees were kind of dying of, uh, of uh, some canker and um, oh, what's it called, gamosis from cracking. So I thought we'd put some, uh, some seedling peaches under there. We planted all our pits. This one was doing pretty good. We gave Poppy a couple. The fruit might not be great on that, but we can always graft onto it. And then we transplanted it down here and it looks fantastic by the pond. Look at that thyme, the creeping thyme. The bees, I mean, it's kind of probably too early for the bees. It may be wet, but when I come out here in the day, the bees are all over that. Got the tick seed coreopsis that we just planted the other day. And we've got this little pawpaw guild here that I've been adding in. We sowed a bunch of salal into here as an understory, so we'll see if that comes up. We also sowed salal into here and we used some compost and apparently the compost had a lot of um, lamb's quarter. This is a fantastic green. So we're gonna let this girl pull out the ragweed. We'll let this lamb's quarter grow and we'll eat it. Pull out the dog strangling vine that's always growing. Just chop and drop with it. We've got more yarrow up here. I spread a lot of yarrow last year all around this bench. I really want to turn this into a little bench where I'm sitting surrounded by, you know, butterflies, uh, herbs and flowers on both sides, and then I can have a tea and look out over the pond from up top if I ever want. And then look at these pawpaws here. They're doing fantastic. We've got elm growing there. So we kind of, that was probably squirrel planted or wind blown or something. I don't know if I have elm anywhere. And then we've got a pawpaw in here struggling with some, um, I think that's mugwort or motherwort. 
I'll have to pull that out, but I think I need gloves to do that one, and I just haven't gotten around to it. But this is what you want to watch for all your plantings and trees. So you want to watch when they get kind of smothered by other plants, and then you can kind of remove them, chop and drop with them. That was a volunteer that uh, I don't want to let grow and propagate into seeds, so I'll have to do that and take care of that. We've got a hascap in here that's kind of being smothered a bit by this kiwi. I think kiwis are going to do that. This kiwi is going nuts. Possibly a mistake to put this right against the house, but I thought if I can put some screws in here and then trellis down, then I can have a wall of kiwi here, and I'll just have to really manage it. So this is what complete neglect looks like this year because we've been far too busy with other things. Jenny's like a drowned rat getting out in the dew in the morning. So I think that's it. Got uh, roses there coming in from Rosa Rugosa. I think that's it for the food forest update for today. I have to get going. It's 20 minutes now. You can tell when I don't edit these things, when I say like, you know, I'll go out and film like two hours of content or like an hour of content. Yeah, that's why it's just really fun to get lost out here. And look at these beautiful flowers. This is fantastic. So great additions to the food forest. You can eat this, make tea with them. The rose hips are very healthy. You can make jam, rose hip jam. Look, I mean, this is why I get lost out here. You see the bees on the comfrey? Get my shadow out of there. So we got the bees just enjoying this comfrey. This is why I let it go to flower. And I know it looks kind of, I mean, I think it looks nice, but it does look a little wild when it gets up this way. Another week or so and it'll start to turn brown, kind of like it's starting to do here. It'll fall over. I'll kind of push it over and then new growth will pop up. Um, but it does look a little crazy. But it's got so much function. Like just coming down here, there's another bee there. As I film my shadow. So we'll take this inside and we'll get going. Trish wants us to get going. I'll leave my food for us. It's just so hard to walk away from it. I hate when I'm not here on the weekends, but uh, I'll catch up with you probably next weekend. Oh, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it. I think I did, but we're going to go visit Tom again and go see his food forest property. So expect an urban permaculture update probably in the next week or maybe two. I know a lot of people really love Tom. They loved his backyard and they love the urban permaculture, not necessarily this five acre stuff. Well, I'm more like one acre not really the one acre stuff, but they like the smaller stuff. Harry's in there looking for strawberries and, and has caps to nibble on. He's got a donut on his head because he got hurt, um, got caught on some chicken wire. So we removed that. No, oh, thanks, buddy. So this, did you see that? He actually peed. So this is why we, anything on the ground in this area, I know the dogs can get to. So I definitely wash the stuff that's on the ground because Harry just gets in there and eats. I said I would leave, but this is just so funny. Oh, it's coming up. Hey buddy, get some snacks? Hey, what's a, what's a donut head? Hey, what's up with the donut head? Hey, keep licking. You're such a dummy, eh? All right, see you on the next one.